Somebody help me out so I don't have to keep trying to jump back and forth. Um, 3x plus 1. 3x plus 1. Four four minus, minus 6. 2x plus 8. 2x plus 8. And they also tell us one other thing in the picture. What do they tell us? They're all equal with the line. So they all got those little tick marks on them. That tells us they're all equal. Do we have to... How are we going to do this problem? Are we going to set up the same as we were setting up those first problems? Where we do like this plus this equals that. No, it's not going to work that way, is it? So, what can we set up? What take and tell us about all of them? Do we want to set this equals that equals that? No, we just want to pick. So pick me two of them. And before you pick, what should you try to do when you're picking this if you get a choice? Make it what? Easy. easy. As easy as possible, right? You want to pick the ones that are the easiest. So let's say, let's say this one here, I know it doesn't, but let's say it had a fraction in it. Would you really want to pick it? Mm -hmm. Probably not. All right, so which ones do you want to pick? The first and third. The first and third, so 3x plus 1. Now on the, all the other questions, we were saying, this plus something else equals something else, right? Is that what we're going to do here? So this equals what? Now what I need is I need somebody to, while I'm doing what I have to do here real quick, need somebody to go up there and solve that. And you guys can help each other. So somebody who's not a scaredy cat is that you, Lexi, or scaredy cat? Somebody that's not a scaredy cat, go up there and solve it and help that person. And once they have it solved, once they have it solved, read the question again and make sure you get the correct answer. You want me to use, you want me to use a marker? You want me to use, use a... That, use that pen that I would use to right. write on the board. Because <coughs> we got to record this. It's still recording, right? Yeah. 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 Everybody understand that? So we knew all three of them were the same. You figured out this first one was 22. First you figured out x was 7. Figured out the first one was 22. Notice here, did he forget something on this? Do you need that? Not if you're given the length, right? But if you put it up there, am I going to mark it wrong? No, nah, I probably won't care. But if it's a length, then you know it has to be a segment. Thank you, Luke. Next question. Do you do 42? 42. 
marching band at Jefferson High School. I used to teach at Jefferson High School. In Detroit? Huh? In Detroit? No, always this one in Detroit. No, yeah. no. It's taking a field trip from Lansing, Michigan to Detroit. Uh, the bus driver was told to stop 53 miles into the trip. If the rest of the trip is 41 miles and the, enti uh, and the entire journey can be represented by the expression 3x plus 16, find the value of x. What should we do first probably on this? They have a picture there, but... So a very good picture. Mm -hmm. Now for what we want. We should probably draw another one, right? Yeah. What's the first place here? Um, Let's make it out. Where, where are we going to? Detroit. And we're stopping somewhere in here, right? I don't know. Something, is that pretty close, maybe? Yeah. And I don't know. We'll just put S for stop. Is that, is that all right? Yeah, maybe not. That's well, I had high school students in here. But there. What do we know about this distance? 53. 53. And this, this is 41. Yeah. And what they tell us about the whole distance? Sixteen. 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 All right. Now, if we'd gotten rid of that, and they said they uh, they may have just asked you, what's the distance of the whole trip, right? What is the distance of the whole trip? Ninety-four miles. That's pretty easy, right? Just this plus this equals the whole thing. Three x plus sixteen. Equals, and we just add those two together, right? Mm -hmm. Subtract 16 on both sides. Good thing you got your calculators out. Might be helpful here. 94 minus 16 is what? 78. 78. Then what do we do? What's x equal? 22. What they ask us to find? X. X. So we stop there. That's our answer. Next question. 25. 25. Sorry, I'm hit because I already did this problem. Carpenter has a piece of wood. That's my piece of wood. Uh, that is 78 inches long. That means this whole thing is 78 inches. I'll write that in there. Uh, he wants to cut it so that one piece is five times as long as the other piece. What are the lengths of the two pieces? So we're going to cut it. Tell me where we're going to cut it at. Tell me to stop when I, my pen gets to where you think we ought to cut it at. Now, as long as we do the math right, that's all that matters. So we're going to cut it right there. It says this piece is five times longer than this piece. Well, do we know the length of this piece? No. So if we don't know the length of this piece, an algebra, you made it what? So we're going to make that x. This piece is supposed to be five times longer than that. So how long is it going to be? Five, x. five times x. Five x. Same setup, just looks a little different because I drew a board instead of just drawing a segment. All we're going to do is this segment, or this part of the board, plus this part of the board has to equal the whole thing. So tell me my equation to set up. Very good. Could you have simplified that before we wrote it down? Mm -hmm. And if you do, I won't throw a big fit, all right? What is x and 5x? So if you did that part and just wrote down this instead of writing down this, I don't care. I just, if you can do some of it in your head, that's fine. 
Now what? Divide by 6. What's x equal? 13. Is that our answer? No. Oh, for part of it. So one part of the board is how long? 13 inches. That's part of our answer. How are we going to find the other part? 5 times 13. I don't have a calculator. So I can't do it. What's another way I could do it if I didn't have a calculator? 13 minus 78 minus 13. There you go. You could take the whole thing minus the 13, and that I can actually do out longhand. It's not too difficult. 65 inches. Is there any reason you might want to do that? <coughs> yes, no, maybe. Maybe. Especially the price of wood right now. If I was building a box, if I was building a box and I wanted the box to be a rectangle, if I was building this box, everybody tell what my three dimensional drawing is supposed to look like there. And I went out building the four sides of the box. I didn't really care how big the box was. I just needed a box certain. I mean, it can't be a little big box. But I was building this box. Boards, when you go out to Lowe's or Menards or Home Depot or wherever, come in what lengths? Nobody ever has to go out and buy a board. Most of the time they're like 8 foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, 16 feet. 20 feet, so an 8 foot one's a normal one that you buy. So if I wanted to do something like that for this, I said, all right, I don't want my box, I don't want to just cut a foot off, I don't want it to be a foot by. How long would it, the side be if I cut off for one, one board for these two parts? If one side was one foot, how long would this side be? Seven foot. So I might just want to do something like that, but maybe I probably don't want a foot and seven foot. Now I want to make sure I cut it right, so maybe I'd make the box two feet, and then how long could it be? If it was two feet wide, if I had an eight foot board, six feet. Maybe I don't like that either. So if I made it this distance three foot, how much would I have left over for that? Five foot. Maybe that's the box I want. Three foot by five foot. So if I have that, out of one board, well, I have to have another board to do the other two sides, right? If you mess up, then you gotta go do what? Spend more money on the boards and get more. Money. Right now, it's probably not a good thing. Boards are very expensive right at the moment. Other questions? And he's back there like, why in the world would you ever tell us something? You ever build anything? Yeah. See? Dave was thinking of it. Other questions? All right, notes are set up here. Fix them about 10 times now, and there's still a couple of things wrong with it. Come up and grab them. very slow. We're going to get through every bit of this. And this is going to be like the best video I've ever made. Because this is smart.
driver's class I've ever had, right? By far. Fill in what you need to fill in on this. Uh, on the bottom one, on your bottom number line, it's got numbers on yours. I traced it and then printed it off and then printed it off anyway. Get rid of the numbers. So it's got, well, I'm sorry, get rid of 5 and 10. So just mark them out. All right, but I can't count because I went out four spaces and put five. If we're on a number line and you're trying to find the distance between two points, first of all, if I have two points here, together those two points make a what? Segment. So we're trying to find the length of that segment. Some of the same stuff that we've been to deal with segments. <clears throat> if you're on a number line and you're trying to find that distance, there's a formula and I'm going to show you the formula here in a minute. Sometimes it's easier to use the formula, sometimes it's easier to just do what if you want to find that distance. Tell me how you find the distance from N to T. Easier than that. Could you count the dashes? Just count. If you're on a number line, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is count. Count this. Now, be careful. Do we count the little marks? So, watch. I'm standing here. You're going to count my steps. Ready? Go. When did you start counting? After you stepped. After I moved. Not here, all right? So if I'm counting the distance from N to T, ready? Start counting when, when I do what? Yeah. Move. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five. So how long is segment NT? It's that simple. Just make sure you don't count tick marks, you're counting the spaces. The formula, this is the formula. Give you a second. As you're writing this down, we're going to have several formulas throughout the year. This one's not real difficult. First thing, I'm going to do this. Make these bigger. Those aren't ones. Those are, if I know what those marks are. Absolute value. So I'll write that here. You might write that in your notes. Absolute value. Make sure you remember it. These little numbers, these little subscripts, we're going to have lots of formulas that have those subscripts in them. Mathematically, do those subscripts mean anything? Do they tell you to add to or square it or they mean nothing. All they're telling you is that this x is different from this x. Because if I just wrote this, x minus x, we know that Colton, every single time, would say that x minus x always gives him what? Zero. And he'd have to be a smart aleck like that, so we need those little subscripts to say, no, Colton, they're two different x's. So if we wanted to use the formula, let's make this zero. Just write zero there on your notes. If we wanted to use the formula, what's the coordinate for x sub 1 here? 1. What's the, and it's always going to be minus. What's the coordinate for x sub 2? Ready? You can help me out. 1, 2, 3. So what's the coordinate there? Six. six. One minus six. What is one minus six? Negative five. What's the absolute value mean again? It's positive. It's distance from zero. Distance from zero. How far the number is from zero on a number line? And most of you just know that, hey, if it's a negative, you change it to a positive. If it's positive, you keep it positive, right? So what's the absolute value of negative five? So 
So how far is it from X1 to X2 there? Five spaces, five units, whatever it is. So if you wanted to use the formula, you could. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you might not be given the number line. Uh, that's, it's totally up to you. Sometimes you can just count, and that's a whole lot easier. Just depends on the problem. All right, in your books, open up your books, page 27. On page 27, there's a number line. I think it says example one. Draw that number line on this top number line. Put in all the numbers and the points and everything. Take a second and draw that in. This is the most writing we've done all year long, isn't it? Get a little bit late. Making the notes so you have more to do. This might want to help me out, so I don't have to open up my book. What's the number line to start with? Watch this tape, this is how smart I am. They only had to tell me one number on it, not the other three. I'm a genius. Might help me out and tell me what points they told us. Where's A at? I think it's one. Four is A? Yeah. Everybody, I said this right. Ignore that. You can tell that that's a B and my pen just went nuts. Negative one to C. Two D is two. Crazy. Ignore that one too. Somebody pick me a segment. How many points to name a segment? Two points. Pick me any two points. DE. So segment DE, we want to find the length of it. Pick me another segment. AF. How are we going to find the length of segment AF? Uh, count, but that's a lot of counting, and I'm afraid that. And. See, some of you can get off track and those are counting them probably. So let's let's do the formula. What's the coordinate for A? It's always minus in between them. What's the coordinate for F? What's negative four minus five? If you got your calculator there, use your calculator. And I will never ever ever yell at somebody for grabbing their calculator when they're doing any. I don't care if it's two plus three. I might look at you if I'm going to say that. But I won't yell at you. Grab your calculator and check everything. No reason not to. Somebody said negative 9. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What's the absolute value of negative 9? Nine? Nine. So how long is segment A? Nine. Pick me another segment. C and C and Do we want to use the formula? You just want to count. Six, he has counted, it's six, right? Yeah. All right, it's on a number line. Nothing real difficult, pretty easy to do. Look down at the bottom one. Don't write anything down, just look down at where it says check in your book there. Mm -hmm. Take a second and figure out how long segment AE is. Don't holler anything out, just Figure it out. Now, on multiple choice question, and know that Ebersole is a jerk just like the book is, let's look at answer A. Negative 12. Could that be an answer that somebody might come up with? 
How? Why? They forgot to do the absolute value. If you do negative 5 minus 7, what do you come up with? Negative 12. What do we know about distances? If I'm standing here, ready? We're going to count my steps. Are you counting? What you come up with? Four. Four? But I was going backwards. What do you know about distance all the time? It's always positive. Can't be a negative, so it can't be negative 12. Letter B. How might they have come up with two? Five minus seven. You get two, right? So if somebody's doing this problem and they do it wrong, and they look down there, oh, there's two. Yeah, that's the answer I got, so that must be right. Does it look right on the graph? No. Letter C. What do we know about letter C? That is the correct answer, right? Mm -hmm. At least if that's what Liam's got, so I'm hoping that that's right. I don't know. The letter D, how might they have come up with that? They counted the little tick marks instead of the spaces. Remember when we were using the rulers the other day and I said count the spaces in between two numbers? And I guarantee there was a couple of you in here who said 17. What did you do? Counted the lines instead of the spaces. All right, what I need you to do next. I don't know how far did this jump on me. This one. What I need you to do next, get out your computers, go to the book website. On the book website, again, if you haven't bookmarked this, please do. We've been over on there, what, three times now? And On the book website, once you get to that little bar where it says, what's it say? I don't know. It's that little white bar and it says something about explore the book or something. Or I don't know. Explore your course. I don't know. It says something. Everybody know the little white bar I'm talking about? You, you go to the book. Or not the book, but the thing that says, what is this, Brown 3? You go to that, Brown 3, you click on that. Then it pops up a screen, and it'll have that little white bar in it, and it's got a drop down. On the drop down, you want to go to Module 1. Why the one below it? Again, if you haven't bookmarked it, please bookmark it before you get out of it today.
your screen's going to look different than my screen does. Under Explore and Develop, it's got all these boxes. We want to go to the box that says Explore using Pythagorean Theorem. Now, on your notes, and hopefully, yeah. On your notes, real quick, before we do all that, before we get into this. Does anybody remember Pythagorean's theorem? Come on now, I know you do. A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Okay. These are sides of a right triangle. All right? These two sides are the legs. This is the hypotenuse. That's the side across from the right angle. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What we're going to cover today, the formula that we're going to cover, comes from Pythagorean's theorem. It's derived from Pythagorean's theorem. What you're going to look at here when you click on this explore, so click on that. And again, I don't know, mine, I think mine looks different than yours. Yours doesn't have all this extra stuff out here, does it? No. So it's going to look something like this. It says you can use the sketch to find the distance between two points A and C on the coordinate plane. So if I scroll down here, uh, now I'm going to make it full screen. If I scroll down here, you see I have segment AC. We can move it around. What are you going to do if you had to find the distance of segment AC if I moved it like that? Just count the spaces. What if I moved it like right to there? Count the spaces. So if it's vertical or horizontal, all you got to do is count the spaces. When it's diagonal, it doesn't work out so well. Can I just count the spaces there? No, it doesn't work out so well. All right? Now, the next thing I want you to do is we could use the formula that we're going to learn here in a little while to find that. But what I want you to do next is here, where it says show right triangle, click on that. And what it does, it shows you a right triangle. So it took that segment and it made it into a right triangle. It just put two other sides on it so that we could use Pythagorean's theorem to find the length of it. Mine looks terrible. I'm going to make it a little better looking. Does that look a little better now? But a right triangle. So we started off with this segment, A to C, and all they did was they added this on and added this on. And the reason they did that, and I'm not going to be able to, to, to draw it up here using this, but I want you to just mess around with it. I did this. If this is A, this is C, and I connect them to make a right triangle, and I'm trying to find this length. This is a right angle right here. How can we find the length of this side? Count spaces. How many spaces is it? How can we find the length of this side? We could use Pythagorean's theorem to find that. We could count for two of them and then use Pythagorean's theorem to find the last side. And that's the side that we're actually looking for. And that's where the formula that we're going to talk about today comes from. All right? Now, all I want you to do is just for a minute, we're not going to do this forever. I know maybe some of you would like to do it forever instead of hearing me talk. But just move the points around and sort of get an idea of what happens as you make AC either longer or shorter, what happens to these other two? I can't do it anymore. I did it this morning, and now I can't get it to do it. See if you can get B to be right on the origin. I can't. For some reason, it doesn't like me.
Does anybody know what that missing side is there? If one side's three and one side's four? Well, hopefully you'll know it by the end of the year because we're going to use it a whole lot. What's three squared? What's 4 squared? 16. 9 plus 16? 25. What do we have to do once we get to this point? Square root. Take the square root. What's the square root of 25? 5. So what we're going to do today is something like that. And if I could, again, this is just to help you out. If we're doing something out in the real world, first of all, is our A and C going to be stuck? They're making the reason I can't get it back to z uh, zero, 0, for B is A and C have to fall. They won't let it fall right in the middle. It's got to fall on a whole numbers, right? So I can't get this to move back to where I want it every single time. I'd like it to just come down there and be right on there, but it won't. You might figure out a good way to do it. But what this is showing us is how that changes. Notice <clears throat> we could have this triangle with this side being real short, this side being long. Then we have the hypotenuse over here, the side across from the right angle that's the C. And we could use that. Take another minute or so while I'm getting my computer back to where it belongs and play with it, then we'll jump back to the notes. Oh, the other thing I will say, on the EOC test, the end of course test, and you've probably used the Desmos calculator before, it's got a setup like this that it will do that stuff for you. It'll graph these points. You graph the points and move them around like that. I'm not very good with computers. I'm sure you guys are a lot better than me with computers. So if you're on that end of course test, use it. Again, before you get out of there, make sure you mark, bookmark that if you haven't already. <coughs> All right, set, set your computers. Uh, you can turn them off. We're done with them. Uh, Find this on your notes. This is the formula that we're going to cover. Distance formula. Have you ever seen this formula before, any of you? Yeah, Mrs. Barnes last year. I know you've seen it. Yeah, Mr. Harrison, I'm guessing you've probably seen it, but I don't know. Again, as you're filling in this stuff, what's these little ones and twos here mean? Just two different points is all it's telling you. Same thing down here. Now, does this two mean something? Yes. Yeah, that means square. Does that two mean something? That I'd have you write on this. Just a second here. That I'd have you write on this. If you have an ordered pair, first number is always the what? 
x, the second number is always the y. Just to make sure you know that. Now it seems like something really easy, but seems like something real easy, but some people forget it. What's this point called again? The origin. Origin, and it's always zero, zero, just to review some of this stuff. Notice, did I draw my graph wrong? Because I put the x and y not right in the middle. No, uh, don't always put your x and y right in the middle because a lot of the stuff that we do, your numbers won't fit on there if you put them right in the middle. All right, so make sure that you are knowing what numbers you're dealing with. Perfect square numbers. We're just going to list these out and we're just going to write them down there. I'll tell you the first perfect square number is 1. All perfect square number is, is you've got just a little bit of space, it won't take much space. All a perfect square number is, is a number that if you take the square root, it comes out even. If you take the square root, it comes out even. What's the square root of 1? One. What's the next perfect square number? A, a four. Two times two gives you four, correct? What's the next perfect square number? Nine, that's three times three. What's the next perfect square number? Sixteen, good. Next one? Twenty-five. You guys sort of getting the idea of the pattern here. What's the next one? 36, next one, 49. 49, next one, that was 7 times 7, 64, 64. that's 8 times 8, 81, 81. then what, 100, then what, 121, that's 11 times 11, then what, 144, that's 12 times 12, then what, You might grab your calculator now, all right? 169. Now, if you got to grab your calculator anyway, are you going to remember anything any higher than that? Probably not. Those are ones just, if you can know them, and you've got to take the square root of some number, and it's one of those numbers, then you don't have to grab your calculator. All right? If it's anything higher than that or you don't remember it, then you grab your calculator and take the square root anyway. On this, I got these numbers, 4, 3, negative 3, 7. I'm going to graph it just so we can see it this first time, then after that, if you want to graph these points every time so that you can see the segment that you're finding the length of, that's great. Otherwise, I look at these numbers, I got negative 7 here. That's the biggest number I have, or the number that's farthest away from the origin that I have. So I know I need some space down below. So I might make, don't ignore that dot right there, that's the dot that I couldn't get off this graph. I might make my x-axis way up here somewhere, and maybe my y-axis goes right here. How do I graph the point 4, 3? Tell me how to move. How do you move for four, three? Uh, right, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, thank, three. Luke, thank you. You might be the first student in about 10 years that I've had that said that correctly. What's the, when it's four, you got to tell me direction, right? Correct? Everybody always just says you go over four. I don't know which way to go. So right four. Up three. Up three. X. Y, the X tells you how to move left or right. The Y tells you how to move up 
four down. How about negative three, negative seven? How do I move on that? So that's the segment that we're looking for the distance, the length of that segment, the distance between those two points. Again, do you have to have the graph to find that distance? No, all we're going to do is use the formula. Watch as I write down this formula, distance formula. Whenever I write it down, this is what I usually write. There's a minus in there, it's squared. There's a plus between the two parentheses. There's a minus in there, and that's squared. Those things always stay the same in the formula. They never change. So every time I start a problem where I'm using the distance formula, I start off with that skeleton of the formula. Then my two points, I'm trying to find the distance. The four is in an X or a Y. So I'll write a little X up here. The three is in an X or a Y. Wow. The, one. Right, the negative three is in an X or a Y. Yeah, the negative seven, X or a Y. Wow. And if you you don't have to label those every single time. If you can, if you already know that, that's great. Helps some people. What are my two x's that go in these first spots then? Negative three. Negative three four. and four. Now Luke turned them around. Does that matter? No, it makes no difference. What goes in these other spots? Negative seven and three. Again, Luke turned them around. And I'll tell you this, Luke turned them around. I probably wouldn't have turned them around. So mine would have looked like this. And we'll, we'll come back to that here in a second, all right? Mine would have looked like that. I probably wouldn't have turned around. The order, you might write that down though. Order makes no difference. When you were doing the slope formula last year in, in algebra, did the order you put the letters or the numbers in make a difference? Yeah. For distance formula, it doesn't. Now, here's where I want you to grab your calculator. <coughs> on your calculators, <coughs> trying to make this as easy as possible on you. So everybody grab your calculator so that you can punch this in to make sure you get the same thing everybody else is getting. And make sure you know where all these buttons are. Don't put in the square root. That's just going to confuse things. So just ignore that square root for a minute. You're going to type in these buttons. Parenthesis, negative, three, minus, four, close parenthesis, Squared, does everybody know where the squared button is on their calculator? Plus, parenthesis, negative 7, minus 3, close parenthesis, 2. Or squared, sorry, not 2. My fault. And what that give you? 149. Everybody agree with that? Is that our answer? No. no. We're looking for the length of this segment. That segment's not 149 units long. We still have to do what? Take the square root of it. Does everybody know what this symbol means? Approximately. So it's like an equal sign, but it's wavy. It means approximately. Because we're not going to give an exact answer if we take the square root here, because this isn't going to come out all nice and even, is it? What it come out to be? 12.2. We'll say somewhere close to 12.2. You should go out one place. We'll probably go out one place most all the time on lengths of things. 
So the length of that segment. Does it make sense? Does that segment look like it's about 12.2? Again, the other thing I want you to write down here, if the segment is vertical or horizontal, what do you do to find the length? Just count. If the segment's vertical or horizontal, just count. Ignore that. Just count. So if the segment's vertical or horizontal, just count the spaces. But if you don't graph it, are you going to know if it's vertical or horizontal? No. So that's where the graphing might come in handy. Otherwise, we really don't need to graph it. Try this one on your own. If you want to graph it on your paper, you can. If you don't want to, don't. don't. Just use the formula. I'll put the formula up here. Just looks like this, and you're going to stick the x's in here. The y's in here. That's an x. That's a y. That's an x. That's a y. Oh, before you do that, let's go back over here. Luke turned them around, which came out fine. What are you going to do if you have minus a negative here? Plus and plus. That might make it easier to punch it into the calculator. Same thing there, right? So that's why I might not have turned around. Go ahead and try that one there on your paper. So you don't have to grab it. Did that not? No, you don't have to. So I didn't. So I put that on there too, and it didn't. I must have. I don't. I must not have put it on there before I printed it or something. I messed up somewhere. Or I saved it to the wrong spot or something. Because I put those coordinates on there. And if Kylie back here thinks that she can, in her calculator, she can punch in the square root at the same time and do all of it as one thing. <clears throat> That's fine. Don't try to explain it to me or the rest of the class. Because doing two steps makes it easier. Because everybody has so many different calculators, it makes it hard to try to explain all of that. Kylie, I'm not saying you were trying to do that. I'm just. I see Colton trying to do it. We might make him answer it. So I think he's going to get the wrong answer. Maybe it's up on that. got an answer that's great I'm gonna I'm gonna do it up here I might turn these around this time and put the numbers from this one in the first locations and the numbers from this one in the second location it, it doesn't make any difference it should still give you the same answer I'm gonna work mine out longhand so I want to turn around that's an X I'm gonna put five here and negative six here nine I'm gonna put here negative four here now I'm doing this all out longhand because I don't have a calculator. So I'm going to change that to plus, change that to plus. I got still the square root. 5 plus 6 is 11, so I got 11 squared. Plus 9 plus 4 is 13. So I got 13 squared. Um, 11 squared, I think. You guys told me earlier it was 121, right? Yep. 13 squared, I think you told me, was 169. Mm -hmm. Now I add those two, that's 100, or no, I'm sorry, 290, is that right? Yep. And then you got to take the square root of 290. This part I can't do in my head. If it was a one of those perfect square numbers that came out all nice and even, maybe I could do it in my head. This part I can't. 
So we need a calculator here, or I'm going to tell you, if it doesn't come out all nice and even, you could just leave it that way. There's nothing really wrong with that. I, a lot of times I'd rather see the decimal answer, but this is an exact answer. Because with the decimal answer, we're going to have to round it off. So this is an exact answer. So when Jackson goes out and he gets his high paying job at NASA, and they want him to be precise, he might want to leave his answer this way. All right? Mr. Ebersole works at National Trail teaching high school students. He didn't want to see that answer. He wants to see the decimal answer. He wants something rounded off. What did you guys come up with? 17.0. Now, does that zero matter? Yes. Yes. If you're in one of the science classes and you're talking about significant figures, it matters because that's telling whoever looks at this next that if you just left at 17, it looks like you rounded it off to the nearest whole number. Here, it looks like you rounded it off to the nearest 10. All right, so that matters. And they know that, hey, they, you were being a little more precise leaving that zero on there. Everybody handle all that? Is this on your notes there? Yeah. Uh, Maddie and Julia are hiking at their local state park. Both girls start their hikes at the main shelter, but go on different trails. After three hours, Maddie is five miles north and three miles east of the shelter. Ju Julia is seven miles east and two miles north of the shelter. How far apart are the two girls? How can we do that? First of all, what do we know about the distances that they're dealing with? Any, any negatives? So if I'm going to draw my graph here, do I want to put my X and Y right in the middle? No. I'm going to make this my Y, this my X. So all I'm looking at is that quadrant one because everything's going to be positive. Probably, what are we going to put right here in this corner? The origin. The origin. Where was the origin, the starting point? Shelter. Let's write shelter right there. Shelter. Mine's so hard to read. But. And you just got to be able to think this through and make a grid. You think they ever do this in real life? And kind of grid like this. Yeah, when there's a search party or something, let's poor Isaac gets lost out here somewhere because he's out there hiking and gets lost. Guess what they make the terrain into? A grid so they can search and make sure. Otherwise, you got everybody out here searching and Mr. Ebersole goes and he searches over in here and then right behind him, Tatum, Tatum comes in and starts searching right there. Then right behind him, Jackson searching right there. We're all searching the same place, and poor Isaac's out here dying out in the desert somewhere or wherever he's at. Uh, let's do this. Who was we had Maddie, right? Can we make Maddie a a point? Yes. How are we gonna make her a point? Maybe we need this got a little compass here. On a compass, what's this direction? About this direction. This All right, so let's, let's go with that. What did, what did they tell us about Maddie? Five miles north. Five miles north. Five miles north. And three miles east. So five miles north. Where's that going to go? Yeah, that's the y coordinate. So we have five over here and three miles east. So that's what? That's the x, correct? So five miles north. Oops. One, two, three, four, five up and three east. We'll put her right here. That's Maddie. What was the other person? Julia. Can we make her into a coordinate? Our ordered pair? 
distributed seven miles, seven miles east and two miles north. Seven miles east. What's that going to be? Our X or our Y? Seven miles east and two miles north. Now, looking at this, looking at the north, south, east, and west, we may have sort of got lucky here. Might we have used the negative stuff on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If Julia went south, what would we have needed? The negative point. The negative part. All right? So we got those. Uh, let's see, Julia. Did I write that right? Seven, two. Is that her point? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. That's Julia. We're trying to find the distance between the two. Did we really need to draw the picture? No. No, what did we actually need here? Just the coordinates. Just the coordinates. That's an X, that's a Y, that's an X, that's a Y. So if I come over here to the side, because I'm running out of space there, uh, write this down every single time. When I'm using the distance formula, I write down that exact same skeleton of the formula. What's our X is this time? Three, three and seven. seven. Now, again, think as you put them in. Three and seven. Is that the way I want them? Seven, three, seven. Maybe seven and three. Is that going to make it easier to do? Yeah. yeah, maybe. Seven minus three is four. Three minus seven is negative four. It might make it a little bit more difficult. What's my Y's? Five and two. Five and two. Is it all right yeah. to do five and two? Because yeah. I took seven, remember slope formula last year, if you started it with this point, you had to stay with that point. Doesn't matter with the distance formula, so we can do it that way. Type all of that into your calculator. Type all of it into your calculator. As you're typing that in, I'm going to do it out longhand. This one I don't have to use the approximately symbol because what did it come out to be? Five. So how far apart are they? Five, 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 five miles. Five miles apart. Now the other thing we could have done, what that whole thing was, where you were just playing with the triangle and stuff, yeah. and it was sort of seemed like it was a waste of time. The whole point of that was to do this. If I turn this into a right triangle, how long is this side? Three. Three. How long is this side? And we figured out a few minutes ago that if this side's three, that's a right angle, that side's four, what's this side going to be? Using the Pythagorean's there. So we could have done it that way also. So on the test, if we had a graph, if we had You don't have to. Not always. I mean, there'll be times I'll say graph it, and then, yeah, that'll be part of your... Chelsea and Amy are sitting in separate cars on some incline. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Is that what it is? Chelsea is traveling up the mount, up Mount Washington, and Amy is traveling down. Uh, when the two girls notice each other, Chelsea has a horizontal distance of 212.0 feet from the lower station and a height of 151.6 feet. Amy has a horizontal distance of 435 feet, 435.3 feet from the lower station and a height of 311 feet. What is the distance between the two girls? First thing, let's do this. I think Chelsea's the first girl, right? Yeah. Can we find the ordered pair for Chelsea? Let's think about it here for a second. If we got our X and Y axes, The station, if we put the station right here in the middle, it says her horizontal distance is 212. Is that the X or the Y, horizontal distance? X. X. So 
and her height from the station is 151.6, so what's that? That's the Y. Amy has a horizontal distance of what? 35.3. So that's the X again, right? And what's her height? Somebody write those down on your notes there because I'm going to switch so I can have a uh, graph up here. I don't have space to have a graph. A few of you got them for me? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. Now, I start to graph this. That's my y, that's my x. You got the, I'm guessing that the lower station or whatever it was is right down here, right? Where the, so they're, one of them's traveling up the hill on these, this car and the other one's traveling down the hill on this car. Do I really want to try to graph those points that they gave us? Probably not. All right, you could, what would we say uh, Chelsea's was? What was Chelsea's point? 212. So 212, we'll go over this way. I'm just going to estimate. 212. 151. 151. So maybe somewhere, I don't know, about there. We'll call that C. That's Chelsea. What was Amy's? That's over, way over here somewhere. And that's up here somewhere. That's Amy. So we're trying to find the distance apart these two people are. All we're really going to do is plug into that formula because putting it in that or drawing the graph really doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this case. Somebody help me out. What's our X's? Um, four, I mean, sorry, two, 12.0. 2 12.0. And then 151.6. 151.6. Everybody agree with those two? Those are our X's. What's our Y's? 435.2. 35.2. Might try to plug all that into your calculator just that way. I didn't. Don't do the square root. Yeah, you're probably going to get a big number. 75,558.98. 75,500 and what? 58.98. Anybody else get that? I got 75,000.98. Say it again. 75,000. Anybody else get either one of those? You got the first one? Anybody else get the first one? Did you do it wrong? I don't know. I didn't do it. Yeah. And I'll do this a lot. Because is there anything wrong with getting the wrong answer? No. As long as we figure it out and you go back and you try it again and we all get the same answer. Alright? So we're going to keep trying it until we get the same answer. Anybody else get either one of those two? No? What'd you get? 151.8. Did you already do the square root? Yeah. Oh, see, I, I, we haven't done the square root yet. <coughs> You're a step ahead of us. <coughs> I got uh, 75,366.98. Three hundred and what? Sixty-six point nine eight. Somebody else said they got that also? Yeah. So it's everybody punch it back in again. I'll grab a calculator. I'll punch it in with you. <coughs> Hold up a second and, and we'll do it stroke by stroke. Again, <coughs> uh, Prince C. 212.0 minus 151.6, close the parenthesis, hit the squared button, plus parenthesis, what's that, 435.2, is that right? 0.3. This is point, is that supposed to be? 
be a point three there? Yeah. yeah. Ah, so that might be part of the problem. I wrote the wrong thing up here, confusing everybody. 435.3. Who told me that just so I could get it wrong? You know, being a jerk to me. 311.3 also. 311.3. Okay. Close the parentheses, square it again, hit equals. Why well, didn't get nothing like anything that you guys yeah, got? Yeah, I got like yes. 1.6 is a like word. Oh, is it? Do we yeah. have them in the wrong spots? Yeah. yeah. So, so, ah, boy, that makes a whole big difference, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, my first move. So, what do we got to make sure that we do here? Yeah, the road board. Make sure we have both the horizontal and the same thing. Make sure we got. Yeah, just erased my square root. Didn't want it to do that. Make sure. Make sure that you got the x's together and you got the y's together. Otherwise, it's going to give you the completely wrong answer. What are our x's again? Uh, 435.3 and 212. 435.3. 235.0. 212.0. What's our y's? 311.3 and 151. Yeah. Point .6. Point six. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Now let's try it. Punch that into your calculator and let's see what we get. 435.3. Oops, sorry, the parentheses first. Minus 212.0. Close the parentheses. Square it. Plus. 311.3 minus 151.6. Close the parentheses and square that. Sometimes you got to make a decision. Do I you know, need to make a graph? Is it going to be helpful? Is it not? Problem like that one there? Probably not. That's your assignment. <laughs> Using the distance formula. Again, if you've got horizontal or vertical segments, all you got to do is count. count. Don't. You can do the formula, but it's just longer. 